Hello everyone and welcome. We have a very special live session for you today. We will start by introducing our four master's program and the profile of students we are looking for. And in the second part of this webinar, we will tell you all about the admission process, from submitting your application to preparing for your interview and the pre-arrival support provided later on. I will start by welcoming our guest speakers on the line with us, Fatima Farrand, Program Director of the Masters in International Hospitality Business, and Mark O'Brien, Director of Postgraduate Recruitment. Hello, Mark. Hello, Pratima. Can you please uh, tell us a few words about yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Laurie. I'm, as Laurie said, I'm Pratima Farrant. Um, I'm the Program Director for the Masters in International Hospitality Business. Um, I come from a hospitality background, almost 20 years in the industry, um, working for various companies in the United Kingdom um, in sales and global, uh, marketing functions. Um, and then a number of years ago, I moved over to Switzerland and I've had the opportunity to work with Swiss students um, in education um, and specifically working with our Glion students. So it's great working with the team and um, our students that we have with us today. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mark. As uh, Laurie said, I'm the Director of Postgraduate Recruitment here at Glion. Um, I've been with uh, the school for nearly three years and I've worked in higher education for about 12 years. And um, so my background has always been in masters and MBA programs, uh, working with schools like London Business School and the, and the University of Oxford. Um, and delighted to uh, to be working uh, with you guys today to tell you a bit more about our application processes and give you some tips about how to submit a strong application and conduct a strong interview. And um, so looking forward to lots of questions and uh, providing you with more information. Thank you. We also have master students on the line with us. Roberto and Nor. So, Femme Exercise, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Roberto Grazzini. I'm half Italian, half Venezuelan, and I'm doing my first semester of Luxury Management and Guest Experience, which is a master program. And I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for, for inviting me. Hello, everyone. I am Noor Haji Abdullah, and I am half Mauritian, half British. And I'm doing, I mean, semester two of international hospitality business, and I'm very happy to be here as well. Thank you. So, we will start with a short presentation, about 20 minutes, and then we will move on to the QA. So, you can ask questions at any time, but we will answer all of them during the QA, so in about 20 minutes. The question box should be at the top of your screen. Uh, because you won't be able to use your microphone or your camera. Without further delay, I will hand over to Pratima. Thank you. Okay, so starting with, um, if we take a holistic view of our master's degrees, um, at Glion, what sets our master's degrees apart? So just to give you a very quick snapshot of, of uh, what to expect as a student. The opportunity to meet and connect with our industry leaders. Um, our Glion, Glion itself and our faculty, they come with fantastic networks. Um, in the courses itself, you will see that um, some of our faculty members are using guest lecturers to complement different courses, different topics. Um, and what this does is it really adds value, it adds interest for the students and makes it real for the students, for them to, to put this into perspective of the theoretical knowledge that they're, they're, that they're learning. Um, another point that uh, to bring here is that our faculty, as I just mentioned, they are they are experts um, in, in a range of specialist fields. Um, our faculty come with very mixed backgrounds, academic and industry backgrounds. So students, they will expect to learn the knowledge from them. But also what I see on a very day to day basis is where students are really getting to speak to the faculty, getting personal advice, you know, outside of the actual topics that they teach but you know these these uh the our te faculty team come from the industry so they're to offer personal support advice as well as a student our programs are very much designed to develop your critical thinking um it's to develop your research and writing skills especially at master level we're expecting students to be very independent and what the programs are really designed to do is to push students out of their comfort zone. Um, as I said, to give them more independency in their work. But what we really see is a development in their soft skills as well. 
I've personally seen students coming in where we have a transformation. They come in at the beginning of the course, they say, yeah, we came here for the theory, but as an individual, they've really developed personally and professionally as well. Um, and finally, through the actual courses that, um, that we deliver, we have the opportunity, as we said, the, the network that Leon has, the network that the faculty bring, is to have um, the opportunity to really Deep, uh, deep, uh, dig deep into you know five-star brands and have special visits and so on. And we, you will see this in a variety of ways that we do this. Whether it's bringing in lecturers into the actual uh, courses, or whether it's visits to hotels, whether it's workshops that we that um, that, we're, that we're also holding as well. So as I mentioned, this is just an overview of how the master's degrees are positioned. Just moving on to the next slide. Thank you, Laurie. So looking at the homes of hospitality, so uh, hospitality, as I'm sure that you may, uh, you may know, originated in Switzerland. Um, so this is very much part of our DNA and we're very proud of this. Um, and our courses are delivered both in Switzerland and London. We'll go through some of the little courses a little bit later on as well. Um, we have in Switzerland itself two campuses. Uh, the first one is in Glion, uh, which Roberta will comment on shortly. Um, and the second one is in Buell, which you'll see the, the picture at the bottom there. Um, but overall, as I mentioned, um, Switzerland is renowned for quality, uh, for tourism. This is where tourism originated. Um, we also are at the heart of um, um, uh, innovation. It's also uh, known with, within Switzerland, uh, very often featured as number one um, in the world for innovation. And this is what we bring into the actual programs itself. Um, also, that the locations that we are very close to Lake Geneva, um, we're very close to the headquarters of multinational companies. Um, so we're, as well as hospitality companies, where a lot of our students go to jobs globally, um, you'll also find that we have a number of students that go into some of the headquarters um, of multinational companies based around the lake um, or in cities like Geneva. Um, companies like Nestle, um, there's a number of private banks. Um, we have the luxury uh, group, the Richemont group, um, companies like Cartier Rolex, um, and the United Nations, you may also know that are based in Geneva as well. Now, just going back to um, the campuses, because this is where the students are based. Um, so, Roberto, can you give us a very quick um, snapshot of how your experience has been on the Glion campus? Well, uh, I think the first impression was what really uh, made a difference. Because the moment I arrived, uh, I thought it was gorgeous. It, the pictures Obviously, pictures are beautiful, but when you do it in first person, it's totally gorgeous. It was snowing a little bit, so it was pretty, but not too cold. Just a perfect balance. Uh, the, the staff is amazing. Uh, I've actually felt very well since the moment I got here, very comfortable. Also because sometimes studying can give you stress, but here in this campus, you have the ability to go take a walk anywhere, and there's literally so many paths you can take and they're all like in the middle of the forest, they're very relaxing, or you can just go to the Riviera next to the lake, and uh, it's it's really beautiful. And the school itself, uh, well, it, it has everything you need. If you want to work out, you can go to the gym. Um, like, you eat very good. <laughs> and there's several options also where you can eat. And um, overall, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, I got to experience it beyond campus. Thank you, Roberto. So just to recap, um, with the programs, um, the luxury management um, and the innovation programs, um, the students are actually based for one semester in Glion and then one semester in Buell. Um, and with the International Hospitality Business Programme, um, this is actually based in our Buell campus for both semesters. Noor, just over to you. How has your experience been? Uh, my experience at the Buell campus is very different to the um, on Glio campus, which um, the, we have kind of the same activities with the committees, um, the gyms and all this stuff. So those are really nice um, as we are able to connect with other people such as bachelors and also other people which are in the semester two or in semester one of the masters as well. Um, the faculty is really nice and they are able to help you as well um, in anything that you need and uh, for me the campus life here was uh, really nice 
And after you can also go to build if you want to be more independent and more um, city life. If you like the city life, you're able to go to the city and see the different, uh, go on the high street, um, do your shopping, and also you're able to go in the train and do and go to Montreux uh, most of the time or um, other cities, which is really connectable as well. Thank you, Neil. Uh, what you can't see from the picture is that uh, Buell is actually a, a town based in the middle of the mountains um, and it gives opportunities for students both um, on the Glion and Buell campuses to, to have a lot of activities around the lake um, in the mountains, especially for those that love nature as well. Okay, moving on then to um, the next slide. So, as we mentioned, homes of hospitality, both in Switzerland in Lon and London. We do also have a campus um, in London as well. So this is the Glion campus, uh, um, the Glion campus there. Um, now with the Glion campus in London, it's based, um, it's approximately half an hour um, just outside central London, accessible, very easily accessible by public transport. Um, and the Masters in International Hospitality business program is available for students to either study in Switzerland or on the London campus. Um, for those that are opting for London, um, it gives you the opportunity to be um, in the heart of the hospitality and the financial industry as well. Um, and also what it does, it gives students the opportunity to really be immersed in the English language as well. Okay, just moving on then to the next slide. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you. So, if you are um, looking at this slide here, what we're doing is we're giving you, again, a holistic picture overview of our uh, master programs. Um, when you're considering a master program, you may be at this point thinking, you know, which one is it that's more suited to me? So, this is where we will be able to give you a little bit of information about it and be able to answer some of your questions as well at the end. Um, we have a portfolio of master programs. Um, I will start with the Masters in International Hospitality Businesses. That's the one that uh, sort of I, uh, I oversee. Um, it's the it's a well-established program with a fantastic reputation. Um, and this program is really designed to build the foundations of business management skills. In any industry, in order to become a manager, you need to really have the knowledge of different functions, different departments. Um, and this is what this program is really setting you up to do. It's setting you up for these positions. And we do that through the business management skills, through, through the project management courses that we deliver. Um, again, the courses are supplemented with visits, uh, field trips, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, but the idea of this program is really to give you the business foundations. What we do generally find is that students are going to, into really varied um, uh, internships and careers afterwards ranging from traditional hospitality um, right the way through to luxury to events um, i also have students that have worked in um, sort of more financial roles as well um, moving on to the luxury management and guest experience i'll let roberto give you um, just a little bit of background as he's actually studying this masters at the moment so for the luxury management guest experience, uh, well, it's about discovering the essence of the service of excellence, exclusive visits to fashion brands, go behind the scenes luxury companies and elite visiting, uh, elite visiting faculty from famous universities. But uh, my experience with it, what I really appreciate is that the professors, many have an industry background. So uh, it's another approach to class because I'm usually I'm much more used to having a theoretical approach to class. In this scenario, the professors bring their own experiences, how they solve actual problems you have when you go working. And that for me was one of the most valuable uh, lessons I've had in, in my master's program. Thank you, Roberto. And Mark, I think you just, uh, just to go through the other two programs that, um, that we have within the master portfolio. Yes, definitely. So we have the Masters in Hospitality, Entrepreneurship and Innovation. And this programme, as Pratima mentioned earlier, is, is offered uh, for one semester on the Glion campus and one semester on the Bull campus. The programme is really designed for those people who have a passion and interest in, in hospitality, um, but are really focused around innovation and, on, and entrepreneurship. Many of the students have their own business ideas that they want to start in the future, 
maybe directly after the, the masters, maybe in five years' time. And um, some are coming from a family business in the in the in the in the hospitality sector or in a different sector but want to branch out into hospitality. And it's really designed for the students who want to understand what are the innovations in the industry, what are what will the industry look like in three, four, five, ten years time. And um, it gives you the skill set to also you know, not only go back into industry and work for a large player in the hospitality world in an innovation role, it also gives you the skill set and the knowledge to build a business plan, to pitch, to build a brand, to actually how do you raise money, how do you structure a business. So it's a very, very practical program in that respect um, and really gives you a, a lot of opportunities to either move into starting your own business or into an incubator afterwards or joining a larger um, multinational or startup uh, in an innovation type role. Um, and then we have the Masters in Real Estate, Finance and Hotel Development. Uh, this program is offered exclusively on the London campus. Um, and I guess the reason for that is because of the connections to not only the um, head offices of a lot of top hotels and hospitality brands, but also the connection to the city of London and to the world of finance. Um, so this program really teaches students around the real estate market, asset management, private equity, for example. Um, and it's a real estate program. And of course, it is built around the principles of hospitality and the projects you worked on, the case studies you work on, the companies you interact with are in the hospitality sector. However, the principles of real estate are transferable into commercial and residential real estate as well. Um, students on this program will take a, a number of professional certificates, certifications like the you know, Bloomberg or the STR certificates, uh, one and two, which are professional cert certificates for people working in the real estate and development industry, which normally you would need to do after you graduate from your degree and you start working. Uh, but through this program, you build them and complete those cert certificates as you go through the program. Um, as, uh, as Roberto and Pritman mentioned, uh, the programs, similar to the, to the other programs, it has faculty as well as industry experts. So you learn from the industry, uh, you learn what's happening in the industry right now, uh, a lot of case studies and real life projects, um, and you actually get to pitch a portfolio uh, of real estate assets to investors at one point during the program as well. Um, so it's a, a program as a design for those who are really focused around the real estate and hotel development sector. Of course, finance is an integral part of this program, but it's not a master's in finance, and therefore you don't need to come from a finance background in terms of your undergraduate to do the program. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so looking at um, these programs, um, they're designed for who? This is this is what students are always interested in. So for our uh, portfolio master programs, Key things to point out here is that they are for those that want to pursue a career within the hospitality industry, but it's not just exclusively for positions within hotels. Um, we have uh, a range of uh, uh, opportunities, was mentioned before. Um, so if I give you an example, at the moment, I've got a student who's working um, in the Palm in Dubai in a HR function um, to somebody that um, who's now developed his career in a digital marketing capacity um, for Nestle, which is one of the, um, the, uh, the uh, one of the FMCGs based here um, in Switzerland. Um, so students do go into positions within hotels, but also there's actually now a really wide range of opportunities outside as well. The program is also designed for. Um, uh, what we call students that are changing their career, career changes. So students that come in from a completely different background, um, they've somehow found an interest or a passion um, for the hospitality industry. Um, they're coming from a very different background um, and they wish to take um, you know, this chance to develop uh, their career within the industry. Um, what we generally find within the actual uh, programs itself, the courses tend to be, um, the, the students are very mixed now, where we tend to find half and half, um, some that come from a background of hospitality, others complete changing, uh, changing of the careers, um, but it actually complements the learning and uh, the experience for everyone. Um, for career developers, what we are, as we mentioned, that we don't actually expect any previous um, experience or studies in uh, hospitality. Um, but what all of our students do bring is a service mindset. Um, they have a passion for this industry. Um, they want to make a connection with people um, and they bring this mindset. That's the most important thing for, for these master programs. Moving on then, just very quickly to have a look at the, um, okay, so 
So what I'll just do is very quickly go through the structure of the, um, the, the Masters of International Hospitality Business. Um, what I will say here, the structure of the other programmes is exactly the same as what we will cover here. Um, so the duration of the programme is one and a half years in total. Now, for those students that do come, uh, they're coming for a career change, um, we do recommend the Hospitality Immersion Programme, which is run for four weeks on our Glion campus, and this is run before you start the master's degree. Um, it's an operational course, um, but it is, gives you a really fantastic opportunity um, to get that operational experience. Um, and for, I was talking to Roberto and Noor just before, um, they know that their fellow students who have been on this program have had a really, really good experience of that as well. Now, the two academic semesters, they are based with us on campus. So you've got semester one and semester two. So for the Masters of International Hospitality Business, you can either take the option to come and study in Switzerland in Buell or in London. And the third semester is where you actually then leave us off campus and you have the choice to either take an internship or what we call a business research project we do find a lot of students go for the internship project um, of uh, the internship option because they want to get the experience especially as they're just finishing their studies um, now i know i'm just gonna ask Noor here because i know he's just actually uh, secured an internship could you just give us a quick uh, um summary of, of the role that you'll be moving on to Noor? Yes, yeah, so I will be going um, into an in internship in uh, a management training program in the US at the Monteleon, Hotel Monteleon New Orleans. And I'll be doing um, kind of a front office, at, like a front office space agent. And then I will be moving to a supervisor role in the front office. And then I will be moving up to the guest relation, assistant guest relation manager. Um, which will show me kind of how the hotel and the guests uh, and the guests is all. I'm really excited for this, and I'll be really happy to find out how my experience goes into it as well. And yeah. Thank you, No. And Roberta, this is uh, this is for coming up for you for for your next semester to find the opportunity as well. And um, what I will say, during semester three, uh, while students are off campus, um, it doesn't mean that they're alone. And the con we still have contact with them, whether they're actually taking the business research project. Um, if the students are choosing this option, um, they pick a topic of their, um, their interest um, and they work very closely with a tutor um, throughout the semester where the, uh, the tutor is actually having a number of e-meetings, giving them feedback on their drafts. Uh, write the point to where they submit this project. Uh, for those that are students that are choosing the internship, uh, we do have an internship team that closely follow the students as well. Um, along with myself and the programme team, we have constant um, communication with the students um, to see how they're getting on um, as well. So after the three semesters, semesters one and two, as we said, the academic studies on campus, the third semester off campus, that's what completes your um, master's degree in one and a half years. Um, and again, um, I'm just gonna quickly focus on one of the things here, the, the business field trip here, because this actually is a part of all of the master programs. Um, this is always a highlight uh, of, of the studies for students as well. Um, I will be going with Noor to Italy, to Tuscany in, um, in July. And the idea of these field trips is really to get um, an academic perspective, but also for students to apply um, the theory, the knowledge that they've um, been gaining throughout their two semesters. Um, our field trip is all based around service excellence, so they meet a lot of the industry experts. Uh, we are actually basing ourselves in um, a very exclusive villa in Tuscany, um, and it's very much about sustainable business practices. Um, so the students will get a lot of opportunities to um, to meet with uh, the owner of the actual um, the villa where she's come up with this great concept and how she's. Uh, actually turned it into you know a, a fantastic business where uh, it's featured in uh, very much the, the high profile uh, magazines like Condé Nast and Vogue um, so she would talk about her concept we will also meet with people like the F&B director um, and then also during this trip we will have the opportunity to go to Florence uh, where we have two visits um, with the Westin and the St Regis and we have an opportunity to meet the management team as well. So academic, hands-on and a lot of fun as well and it's always a highlight of uh, the students' uh, experience with us. 
Okay, so that's uh, just a little bit about the masters, the actual programs, what you experience as a student. Um, and now what I'll do is hand over to Mark, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about the sort of application process. Thanks, Brian. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a bit more about the application process for all of our master programs, um, from the requirements and the process to I guess, some tips around how to submit a successful application and also um, interview. So. Um, Roberto and Nora, I'll be calling on you for, for some uh, feedback on your experience of interviews because you've been through it uh, on the student side. So I'm sure you'll have some, some great tips to share about your experiences. So I'll ask you a bit about that uh, afterwards. Um, but if you look very quickly, first of all, at our entry requirements. So um, the basic entry requirements are the same for all of our, our master programs. So we have a minimum age of, of 21 years old um, and we require a bachelor degree uh, in a relevant field. Now, when we say relevant field, um, you know, that is very much a case by case basis, depending on what which program you're applying for. As Pritam mentioned earlier, about half of our students are, are career switchers. They're actually coming into the hospitality industry from something different. So we have many students who studied um, business or law or languages or even sometimes engineering or medicine and um, who are, who've always had a passion for the world of hospitality and who want to make a switch into that area. And of course, we still consider um, those uh, those students and their backgrounds uh, and similarly we have students who studied hospitality tourism and uh, and related degrees their bachelor degree and are hoping to come to Leon to um, build their skill set to specialize a little bit more to gain more experience um, and to build a stronger network so I, I don't know I think Roberto and Nora I think you both studied hospitality or tourism related degrees is that correct Nora I think you studied in, in the UK is that correct? Yes I studied in the UK and I did travel and tourism management there so yes Perfect, great. excellent so you're kind of coming to Leon then to more kind of a, an upskill and and Roberto you were in the US yeah I was at Boston University doing uh, hospitality administration excellent brilliant great and um, so as you can see that both of these kind of fall into the category of those who've studied hospitality before but we work with many students who've come from from very different backgrounds and and um, when we say a relevant area we want to look at what you can transfer so if you studied business or languages or law a lot of those skills a lot of the subjects you've done before can transfer into one of our master programs so you're not really leaving everything behind and starting again so we really evaluate each student on a case-by-case -case basis depending on their academic background and where they studied and uh, what their grades were um, and of course, then we have a, an English uh, language qualification. So if English is not your first language or if, you're not, if you haven't spent the last two years um, in school or university where English was the primary language, you would be required to submit a relevant um, and a suitable English test. And as you can see on the screen here, there's a number listed, listed IELTS, TOEFL, the first Cambridge or the Cambridge Advanced. Uh, these are all listed on our website and in our, our brochure. So you can see the grades that are required. Um, however, if you're unsure, if you studied your bachelor degree or part of your bachelor degree through the medium of English and um, you know one of your one of our team or our, our admissions counselors will be able to advise you on whether um, you are required to take an English test or not um, and in some cases for example for London uh, it might be a visa requirement as opposed to a school requirement so every case is different and we'll advise you on that on a case-by-case -case basis okay. so next step uh, slide Larry. So um, just to give you a run through what the, the master's uh, application process looks like. So the first step is to obviously to investigate which program is the best fit for you. And there's a huge amount of resources on our website, on our YouTube channel, where there are videos and recorded webinars and sample classes, et cetera, um, and student testimonials. So there's a great opportunity to learn about all these different programs and see which one is the best fit for you. Once you've you know, had a chat with us, spoken with the admissions teams, um, researched online and have decided which program is the best fit for you, you can apply in two different ways. You can apply online through our online application on the website, um, or you can apply through um, the application pack, which is you can download from the website, um, or you can get from your educational counselor, uh, and that will sort of give you all the documents you need to complete. You can complete them and submit them back to the educational counselor in your region who will assign to you, um, and they'll process the documents. Once we have the documents, we'll go through them and we'll sort of make sure we have everything. So there's an extensive and exhaustive list on the website and, and we'll be happy to share that with you afterwards if you have questions about it. But just from the top of my head, you require the application pack and the form, the CV, uh, which we can help you prepare if you haven't prepared one recently. Um, an application essay, which the title is given to you in the application pack, which focuses more around your motivations and your goals. 
And um, there's also things like your university transcripts and degree certificate. And um, if you haven't yet completed your degree, many of our students come straight from their undergraduate into a master's and therefore they don't have a bachelor degree as such yet. That's quite normal. Uh, you would submit the transcripts from the years you have completed to date and then your application would proceed with them and you add your final transcripts and the letter of completion after uh, you've done so. Um, and then you have to submit uh, other documents like there's a reference letter, which can be academic or professional, and then other sort of documents like passport and health insurance and those kind of documents as well. And um, we help you with all of that. We advise you that we have everything. We make sure we have everything we need. And then once you've submitted all those documents, we would then book in and prepare your admissions interview. Your admissions interview is conducted usually by one of the program teams. So the program directors like Partema or uh, the directors of the luxury, the real estate or the innovation programs um, or one of our uh, recruitment and admissions team like myself, for example. Uh, and we'll uh, book that in around a time that works for you and the interviewer. And the interview is really a, a chance for us to find out more about you. And we'll talk about that a little bit further uh, later. Um, after your interview, uh, your file will be sent back to be reviewed by the admissions team and a final decision will then be made on your application. If you are awarded a place on the program, you'll receive your offer letter within one to two weeks of the interview. Um, and then that gives you uh, time to understand what that means, what the next steps are, and we're here to guide you in that process. If you receive an offer for the program, within 15 days, you need to confirm your place by paying your security deposit which confirms your place in class. And then of course, then you have your tuition fees to pay um, after that. Uh, and then of course, you move into the stage of being uh, a, a, an incoming student with us, which moves you into a different, uh, I guess, a different stage of your journey with Leon. Um, and that's where you get a lot of pre-arrival support, so things like visa support, arrival assistance, new student, you know, engaging with other new students, et cetera. Um, I, I, I'm not sure, so Noor or Roberta, did you have to go through a visa process or, or did, did you sort of, did you have visa-free entry into Switzerland? No, um, I didn't have to go through a visa process um, because I was from Britain. So, mm -hmm. um, but um, there was, I heard that there's some of the people that had to do that and there was no problem that way. Yeah, yeah. And Roberta, did you have to apply for visa? I'm an Italian citizen, so I didn't have to do it. Right. But I do have friends who, uh, particularly my Saudi, Saudi friends, that had to apply. And uh, it took a little bit, but they had no problem on, through the process. Yeah, yeah and well, it's great. Both of you had a, a good experience. You didn't have to apply for it. Uh, but you know, we have students from you know nearly 100 different nationalities on campus at any one time, and therefore we're, we're very used to and familiar with applying for visas and um, with our students from all over the world so it's a relatively straightforward process but it can take a little bit of time so if you are considering applying for our program in september for example you know this is the time you need to be finalizing those documents for your application in order to have enough time to complete that visa process and uh, we have dedicated visa uh, experts and um, who will advise you and help you through that process you're not left alone to do it we very much hold your hand throughout that process and make sure that everything is done right up to the point you arrive in switzerland we pick you up at the airport and get you to campus and into your accommodation. So from the very first point of view, kind of expressing your interest in the program and needing that advice to actually getting to the, the end of the, the process and arriving on campus, we should be there to, to help you. And um, I know that obviously both Noor and Roberta worked with, with different people during the application process. Noor, I, I worked with you in your application because you were based in London and I was based in London. Um, but maybe Roberta, I mean, did you have to ha have a dedicated uh, uh, colleague in, in the US who you worked with? Uh, yes, I work with a Sume Education uh, Admission Officer, Diana mm -hmm. uh, Pizzi. She was really nice, and uh, she honestly facilitated the whole process. Excellent, great, perfect. So yeah, so we, our aim is to obviously hope, guide you along the way from the the start to to the the end of your application journey, and uh, get you safely onto campus. Excellent, great. Let me move to the next slide. All right. Great. So I'm going to talk a bit more about the interview, which I think is one of the most important parts of the application process. So once you've completed your application form and you've written your motivation essay um, and you've submitted the documents, uh, everything is reviewed. And then um, if you're selected for interview, um, we'll then advise you on the interview date, the process, et cetera. Um, just to ask maybe to, to take a step back in terms of the motivation essay which i mentioned that's really an opportunity for you to explain you know why you want to study this particular program so 
everyone's motivation essay is different, but it, it does take a bit of time to think about what you want to include in that. Uh, and areas I would always recommend focusing on things like, you know, a little bit about why you've chosen to apply to Gleon, why this specific program, a bit about your background and a little bit about your goals. So it's a very much a holistic view of, of who you are and how Gleon is going to fit into your journey to the next step. And um, so that's just one thing. It's only one page, so it's not very long, um, but it really gives us a flavor of who you are and what your goals are. So then when it comes to the interview, we can talk more about that. But the interview selection criteria really focuses on a number of different areas. Um, and I'm going to ask Roberto and, and, and Noura to explain their, their experiences uh, in a moment. But really, the interviewer is looking at a number of different things. Um, they're really trying to see beyond the application form because, you know, from the application form, we can see your grades, we can see you know, your, your education background, if you have some work experience, we can see that. But what we can see is how, how do you fit into our class? Who are you? And um, do you fit with the, the Gleon spirit? And, um, you know, will you be a successful member of our class? And will you be a successful alumni afterwards? And that interview gives us a real insight into that. So of course, we want to talk about your academic background. We want to understand what you've done uh, in your previous education, why you chose those subjects, you know, what your experience in university has been like to date. Um, that's one area we focus on. Um, teamwork is an area that we focus on quite heavily. And um, there's a lot of teamwork and group projects as part of the program. So we want to understand more about how do you work in a team? Um, do you enjoy working as part of a team? Can you be a team leader? Um, you know, do you have the, the, I guess, the skill sets to really succeed in a team on, our, on the program at Gleon, but also in the future as well? Um, attitude and behavior. Um, this really is really about you having that real passion for hospitality, for luxury, for the real estate sector, for innovation. So, you know, do you have a passion? Do you have the right attitude to succeed on our programs? Our programs are, as I'm sure the, the two gentlemen will, will, will confirm, they're a busy schedule. It's a, it's a pretty busy year and you are studying a, an MSc program and therefore you really need to have the passion and the interest in the subject area to drive you through and to make sure that you have a, a really great experience. Um, and we're also a small school. We're very much a family, and that's really important to us. And we want people to have the same kind of attitudes that we have to um, be part of our community and want to to gel, to help out, and um, to actually engage with each other. Those are really important things. So I think more so than maybe than, than other programs you may have applied to in the past, like your bachelor degree or other master programs where there's quite large classes and quite big lecture theatres, being quite a small school with a maximum class size of 35, those personal attributes are super, super important. That's one of the areas we pride ourselves on very much. And an area that our alumni talk about quite a bit as a very fond memory is the relationships they built. Um, career goals, super important. This is really just understanding what you want to do. And you don't need to come into this interview process and application process knowing exactly what you want from this. That's what the master's is for. It's really to help you build your next steps and to build your pathway but understanding the kind of roles you're interested in the kind of subjects you really enjoy maybe areas you don't enjoy so much and, and being able to focus on you know what you think you might like in terms of maybe it's a certain location a certain brand a certain role and um, you know this is a great you know a great area to think about and something you can discuss with your educational counselor before you apply and as you apply to get a better understanding and you know being able to demonstrate a passion for hospitality or a passion for luxury and you know and having those interests but not being able to say specifically i want to work in this company in this exact role is absolutely fine that's what we're there for to help you on the path along that journey um, and many times your your plans and your ideas will change when you come to campus and meet you know some of the hundred odd companies that appear twice a year for our career fair you get exposed to new opportunities you never thought you might be exposed to and um, so i think it's good to come with some career goals but with an open mind and then cultural awareness. As I mentioned, we have an incredibly diverse class in terms of their uh, nationalities, but also in terms of their industry, their education background, their family background. It's, it's a very, very different uh, you know, and diverse group of people. Uh, and therefore, being able to work with different cultures is super important. Many of our students have had the, you know, have been lucky and had the privilege to work or study or travel to different parts of the world, and they're able to bring firsthand experiences of that. But also, some of our students, you know, have you know, grown up and studied and worked in their home country and uh, you know have, have traveled throughout their home country which is absolutely fine as well and um, it's really about being open to different cultures and different ideas and being able to exchange your experiences and your ideas with the classmates and um, the interview is typically about um 30 minutes or so and as it covers typically these kinds of areas and your interviewer is really trying to get a sense for who you are. And then those notes are added to your application documents and sent back over to the admissions team who then make a final holistic decision. 
Um, Noor, I don't know if you want to maybe tell us a bit about your your interview uh, experience and maybe you know, don't tell us exactly what they asked you, but maybe if you can remember some of the areas maybe you spoke about and, and a bit about you know, how you prepared for it. Yeah, uh, I'm sure that a lot of you are stressed uh, with the interview I was um, at the start and I did my interview with Pretty Mafara here. Yeah. And um, basically, um, you're going to look at the academic background and all this stuff as um, Marco Brian has explained to you. And for me, like, um, you need to make sure that you have the passion um, to actually be in the hospitality industry and also you need to know about the course, the website, the um, as well, um, to know where you're going. So if you show that you have that passion and you show you have your personality, um, I think that you would be able to get a place here as well. And also you need to think of how you're able to integrate as a family, um, because with the Glion spirit, um, it's mainly about the family and mainly about um, um, and being able to talk and be not being shy with anyone so i think if you're able to do all of those you'll be able to um come to clean with us okay, great thanks Nora. And, and roberto how was your experience uh for me i was for sure nervous before my interview i remember so well i think i will never forget it uh because right before they like right when the interview started my connection left <laughs> and uh, I was, I was. I remember I went cuckoo. Uh, I almost wanted to cry, and then I reconnected. And uh, my interviewer was Nicoletta, uh, doc, uh, Dr. Nicoletta Giusti. She's our program director, and uh, she was so nice. She even apologized for my <laughs> internet problem. She was super nice. And then when I realized that it truly felt different because it was a hospitality school, so I didn't feel like I was being assessed. I truly felt like I was having a a conversation and uh, I really I really enjoyed it and I also talked about my passion and your passion doesn't have to be uh, because I love hospitality I made a restaurant or I opened this it can be something simple for me it was the fact that I really enjoyed making big dinners in my house and I realized that during those dinners I would literally not be talking with my friends because I was too busy opening the door cooking uh, cleaning there fixing that so uh, i talked a bit about that and i feel like uh something as simple as that shows your passion it, it's and and even if you're shy because uh i'm an introvert extrovert i'm that weird balance that sometimes i'm one sometimes i'm the other but here it's as i said it's a hospitality school so people are very approachable when i arrived here so many students uh, came to me and introduced themselves when they noticed i was a new one uh, usually it's vice versa, it's a new one who introduces himself to the others. And that's, mm -hmm. you learn that being actually approachable and nice is, it is being polite. It, it is not just being friendly, it's actually being polite. And it's uh, it, everything from the interview to when I got, well, maybe I went a little bit too far, but uh, it, you, you do feel like uh, hospitality is part of the school. And I really like it. That's brilliant. Yeah, I think you know, from a, uh, an interviewer point of view, I guess the tips I would I would give, and maybe Pratima can add then, is that yes, I said that there is that personality based on that sort of one-to-one -one conversation and being able to show you want to be part of our community is super important. But as Noor mentioned, you know, make sure you go to the website, make sure you understand you know the programs, understand why this program. Um, there is an academic catalogue which you'll find on the website, for example, um, and your education counselor, educational counselor can give it to you, and that explains each subject in, in each program and explains what the credit system is. And you, know, you don't need to know that you know by heart, but it's good to understand kind of you know what the program is and what the content is. And maybe there are certain subjects that you're really really excited about, and we want to hear about that. And there might be subjects that you're a little bit more nervous about, and that's absolutely fine. If you don't come from a finance background, maybe managerial accounting looks terrifying to you, and that's absolutely fine. You know, our goal is to help you with that. And the more we can learn from you in the interview, the better we can prepare for your arrival. So that means that our our program teams, our our, our coordinators and our program managers can actually, you know, they understand that maybe Oh, he expressed in his interview that maybe finance isn't the strongest point. So we know that when you're coming in. So all that information in the interview is really helpful. So yes, the personal side, the passion for the hospitality industry, you know, do remember to go back and do your research to understand why Gleon, why this program, which subjects, and you know, do a bit of research on the industry, the types of companies you might like to work for, the type of roles you might be interested in. I think it's really important. Fatima, did you want to add anything? 
No, I think Nora and Roberta and yourself gave a very good summary there. You know, Nora, as you said, have a little bit of um, reading into the actual programs. Um, Mark, as you said, you don't need to know the detail. It's not about the credits. It's about having an idea of, um, you know, what sort of courses that you'll be you'll be studying. Um, and then the the thing about the career goals as well. Again, um, some students will come in and they say, look, I want to go into the industry. I'm not so sure. But that's also where the program is really designed for you to come in and sort of find your path as well. So um, it's about having some kind of idea of where you want to head in, uh, let's say, in short term and long term. I kind of always go into those questions. Um, but you don't need to be you know, definitive about that as well, because that's where you will perhaps change your mind once you join the program or you will you know, find your, your natural way as well. Um, I remember with Noor, actually, and what Roberta, you said, it's a conversation. Right. So um, I remember Noor worked for Air Mauritius. Uh, so we started off about the conversation about that. But these are the kind of things that are important for us. Um, for the program team, uh, for the faculty, because we are a personalised school. I think, Mark, you mentioned that before. We want to know what our students are coming in for and where they want to head to. Um, and that's very important that we understand your career goals um, and what you, you know, what your expectations as well as well. But overall, um, you know, it's it's a conversation between two people. So nothing uh, to be stressed about um, at all. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Just, just quickly, just very curious, Nora, you know about career goals there, and obviously you've got your, your internship secured and you're going to the US. Was your career goal entering? Is that what you're doing or have you changed? Were you interested in the US or this particular brand or have you gone full circle? How has your journey been on the career, I guess, sort of decision process? Um, no, I have gone um, into what I wanted to do eventually, um, which is the guest relation and being uh, uh, assistant guest relation manager and going up in that way. I wasn't thinking of going to the US. The US was something um, incredible for me because for me, I, I wanted to go either to go back to London or to try somewhere new. And um, the US wasn't in my plan. Um, but um, I'm really excited to go to the US and also um, find a different experience uh, in the US and see how that way is. And also what I like with Leo is that they go through everything um, sort of um basic hospitality to um something which is more advanced in the master's degree so which is really interesting and you're able to see different things even though you don't come back or you don't come from a hospitality industry okay great perfect thank you it's just the next slide Laurie. great so hopefully we have some some questions Yes, we do have questions already. So again, thank you for all of those great insights. It was, it was amazing to listen to you all. Um, if, you, if you need any more information on one specific topic, just hit the question box. You can ask questions to anyone in the audience. So let's start with the first question. Does a GRE score strengthen, strengthen sorry, uh, a candidate's profile? Um, so yeah, so we, we don't require standardized testing like the GRE or the GMAT, for example. However, if you have those scores already, feel free to add them to your application. It always sort of, you know, any kind of information we can find out about you academically is interesting. So for those of you who don't know, a GRE score is typically used for business school applications where it focuses on quantitative and verbal skills. It's not a requirement for us and we don't expect anyone to take that for any of our programs. However, if you already have one, definitely include it because it gives us more information about you but it's not a requirement or not expected thank you how long does the application process take and how long before the chosen intake do you recommend us to start the application process yeah, that's a, a good question um the application process it it's quite a i guess a, an in-depth application process but we try and move it along as, as quickly as possible because we know that students want feedback as quickly as possible so they can make plans so typically if you apply and you submit application documents we'll give you feedback within a couple of days if, if you're missing anything first of all so if you're missing documents let's get them into place but in a situation where you've submitted everything and all the documents are in place we would try and, and arrange your admissions interview within a week or 10 days so you can do it at that point and then after your interview typically a week to 10 days you should have a feedback from your admissions interview and um, so that's really a case of looking at probably somewhere between about two to four weeks and um, from submitting the finalized documents but of course there's always a bit of 
time before that where you're preparing documents, preparing essays, asking questions. So our team is there to work with you on the application process before you apply to advise you on it, to help you with it. So it's always obviously a little bit longer than that. As we get closer to the start of our program, of course, we try and make that process as quickly as possible as so the students have more time to understand their options and consider options and also apply for visas. Um, so for example, for students applying for our September intake, which is you know what we're starting late September, so about three and a half months away, um, you know, you really need to be making a move on that now. There's still plenty of time to apply, but you need to get that process started. Um, so that first of all, you have the option of you know being considered for programs. We don't have unlimited spaces, we have relatively small class sizes. Um, and secondly, if you're applying for a, a from a visa a country for example that does take a little bit of time it's, it's quite practical but it does take time and so i would say if you're considering applying for a program starting in september you really need to make a move on that as soon as possible and um, but there certainly is still time and we're there to support you in that process thank you when are the intakes how many times per year yeah, um, well, I know that Noor and Roberta started in different intakes. Maybe you can tell us kind of when you started, and maybe you can mention maybe a bit about how long your application process took, or you know, kind of what the process was like for you guys. Maybe Roberta, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I started doing. It was basically in the middle of the pandemic. It was almost one year, and um, I think it was during October that I started getting interested uh and uh i had everything ready by november and before christmas i had my answer in the application and and uh that i got accepted and i was super excited because it was like a christmas gift almost um great and you started in the well you started in march so typically our spring intake starts in february and it was march this year because of the pandemic it was a little bit later but normally it would be a february start so you started in our, in our spring intake Yes. And, uh, and then, those who start the HIP program, they started one month uh, before us. Exactly, yeah. So so if you're applying for a spring intake, you would start your program in uh, February normally, and therefore you would start your, your HIP in mid-January. Uh, and then if you're applying for our fall intake, which Noor, you were, uh, uh, again, a normally a September student, you start, you guys started a little bit late because of the pandemic, but normally September. Um, how, how, when did you start your application process? I'm struggling to remember. I know we worked together, but I think it, it was quite some time. Yeah, I started uh, my application, um, I think I started it in March um, and then I did the application, I've spoken to you and um, spoken to you and seen how we can go forward to this and uh, until I get all my things ready it was April, um, end of April and then I sent my application and when the interview and all this stuff, it took around, it took around two months to get the offer back. Um, so um after one week after the interview you you get your um offer back and and then you accept it and you go through um if you have a visa or if you don't have a visa then you just organize your flight and it, and then you can go to either switzerland or london yes yeah and so so the short answer question is there's obviously a, a february intake and a september intake and um, so our next intake is, is this fall september um and yeah that's kind of i guess the, the, the process and actually when we i worked with near with noor nor originally, I think I remember you can you were considering maybe the London campus, maybe Switzerland. So we were kind of looking at both campuses at the same time, and I think we started one application, then moved it across the other campus. So you know, when we can be flexible, we definitely always are. And um, obviously, with the International Hospitality Business Program, the exact same program was offered in London and Switzerland. So because there was no visa restrictions and no, I guess, other restrictions, we were able to move the application at one point across the other. So. There's a lot of flexibility where, where we can. Um, so September and February are intakes. And just keep in mind the Masters in Real Estate, Finance and Hotel Development is only available in September. So two intake per year. For the Master in Real Estate, Finance and Hotel Development, it's only one per year. Exactly, yes. Next question. Um, so this person has a bachelor degree in English and is asking, do I still need to uh, get an IELTS to fulfill my eligibility criteria? Um, it depends on a number of different things. So if they have a bachelor degree in English, which I presume is completely through English, and they've graduated within 12 months of the start of the program, they can apply for a waiver in some cases. However, there may be visa restrictions. If they're coming to the UK campus, they may require an IELTS or TOEFL 
for a visa rather than from the school requirements. So it's very much a case by case basis. So I would say that person um, you know, can definitely reach out to us or we can reach out to them directly to understand their exact situation. Um, but if they have studied at least two years of their university in English and that has fallen within 12 months of the start of the programme, they can usually apply for a waiver. Thank you. Another specific question here. So I passed my IELTS last March uh, and I'm thinking of applying for the master in real estate in London to start in 2022. Do I need to take the UK VI test to apply or is it possible to be admitted with the, the current IELTS? The IELTS is usually valid for us one year before intake. So therefore, if they've taken the IELTS test um, more than a year before the program starts, they would usually be required to retake it or retake an English test. But again, we would look at a case by case basis. So it also depends on whether they required a visa. And um, so normally we would say one year before the program starts is when the, the validity of an English test. And um, however, again, depending on their situation, we would look at it on a case by case basis. OK, and do they need to take the test before applying or you will look at it once you know, you've had the interview? That's a, a really good point, actually. For all of our programs, you can apply without your English test. So for a lot of students, they need to complete their English test. They can apply, submit their application, go to the interview process. And if they're made an offer, the English test can be added as a condition to that offer. And um, just keep in mind, that sometimes, you know, for things like visas, it might be needed. So you still need to get it done as, as soon as possible, but you, it shouldn't stop you. So you can apply without it. So if you're planning to take your IELTS in July, for example, but you want to apply for September, you can start the application process now. It won't slow you down. You would just have a condition on your offer and um, for the English test. Thank you. Do we need an experience certificate to apply? Um, no. So I mean, we have well, we have students who come from lots of different backgrounds, and we've sort of touched on this before. And maybe Pratham can add about the, the diversity of the, the students and their backgrounds. But we have students who studied, for example, hospitality, who, who will have done maybe one or two or three internships, and therefore they have certificates of completion for internships, and that's great. It adds to your application. Please give them to us. That's brilliant. And um, we also have students who studied engineering. I think we had someone last year on the um, the masters in luxury, for example, who had studied. But it was chemical engineering and um, so you know it, it was a very academic program and he didn't have you know experience working in industry and um, even in, in the engineering industry but it was very much an academic program and therefore he hadn't got work experience and that was absolutely fine so you don't have to have work experience and if you have if you have then you can get a letter of completion or, rec or recommendation if not you can use an academic reference so experience is not required for any of the programs and offer if you want to add anything to that great I don't have any more questions at this stage, and I believe it's almost the end of the session. So just before we close the session, I will ask all of you, uh, Noor, Roberto, Pratima, and Mark, to share uh, a word of advice for the, the future student on the line who, who might be applying already or are about to apply. Shall I go first? Okay. So um, for students that are thinking about uh, applying, um, the, it's a fantastic industry, um, and I think Roberto mentioned earlier, no matter what background you come from, um, you'll come to an environment which is very welcoming, um, both from the teams and also from the student side as well. Um, I think my advice would be take advantage of the pool here. Don't stay ever in your room if you're tired. Just get a coffee and go out because it's it's a wonderful experience and meet wonderful people like I've honestly I think I've made like friendships that are priceless um, every experience both academic non-academic with ambassador program try to take the most out of it uh, socially speaking academically speaking extracurricularly speaking be as active as you can because you won't regret it yeah for my part is mainly um going to workshops going to new things um such as committees and get out there um and also um don't be scared and your personality as well should be really good yeah i guess from my side i guess i'll focus more on the the application and admission side is to, to ask lots of questions i mean that's what what, what we're here for is to answer questions so you know, if you need advice on what programs are best fit for you, given your background or given your career goals, if you need advice on, you know, how do I approach the essay? 
is my CV okay? Can you look at it? Can you check and make sure it's the right fit? You know, these kind of questions, ask them. That's what you know. my job is, is to work with students or applicants to advise them on, on all these questions. So ask as many questions you have. There's no such thing as a, a silly question. And uh, you know, really ask questions and uh, get as, as much advice from us as possible. Um, and then we can sort of you know, help you through that admissions process. Thank you. So we are going to close the session. So Mark, uh, if uh, they want to apply now or if someone on the line is not quite ready to apply and would like to get some more uh, personal advice, uh, mm -hmm. what should we do? Yes, good question. So, um, I mean, if you're already in contact with your educational counsellor in your, your local region, depending where you're in the world, reach out to them. Just tell them you've been to the webinar, you really want to apply or you, you have questions about it. So reach out to them as soon as possible and have a conversation with them if you you know you don't have someone you're in contact contact with already of course we'll be happy to, to connect with you so uh, i'm not sure laurie if there's a, an email maybe the invite you got or the email that goes out afterwards there's probably um some contact details for the school there if not even if you go to the website and go to the contact us section and fill in the form we'll get your details and someone will, will reach out to you within a day or so and um, so if you're already in contact with someone in your home country or in your region reach out to them have a conversation with them if not visit the website and uh, and uh, leave your details and we'll get back to you or if all else fails if you go to uh, to linkedin and then find me mark o'brien uh, send me a, a connection request and i'm happy to also um, engage with you and, and give you any advice you need great thank you mark thank you pretima thank you no and roberto it was really great to hear from your own experience um and yes if you if you need anything more just go onto the website download the brochure fill a contact form get in touch with your advisor and the recording will be available on youtube from tomorrow so if you missed anything the beginning of the session feel free to go back on youtube to watch it again thank you everyone i wish you all a lovely rest of the day bye for now thanks larry thanks everyone bye thank you, bye. Bye. Thank you.